So what we have here is um, a clock, 20th century clock, made by the German company Jungens. These clocks that comprise a compound pendulum, which is uh, a pendulum where there is mass both above and below the centre of oscillation, were really popular and uh, you find them in all sorts of guises, but fundamentally the principle is the same. That is, the part where you can see the dial and the hands has got a regular mechanical clockwork movement with a small pendulum, and it's the action of the main compound pendulum swinging that releases the small pendulum. The small pendulum impulses the clock and keeps it ticking. So it's a really clever and intriguing system. Uh, this particular one, uh, we can see, has been well loved, well used. Um, and as we find it, the movement or mechanism is wound fully, which leads me to think there's a problem. With the winding key and hand setting knob removed, we can remove the clip on pressed metal case back. And... On first inspection, the movement looks intact and relatively clean. Looking a little more closely, I can see that the small pendulum that impulses the clock, keeping it moving, has been subject to quite a few interventions. You can see the scratches and marks and such. So to get the movement out of the case, I first remove the front bezel of the case with a watchmaker's case knife, and that reveals the enamel dial, which again seems in remarkably good condition with just one very fine hairline crack running across the centre, and a bit of sort of um, oil around the outside that has um, built up over the years. I use a watch hand remover to remove the hands and of course um, I have to be careful not to press too heavily on the dial. Removing the case retaining screws and their little clips liberates the movement. The dial feet, or the little pegs on which the uh, dial is mounted, are retained by these blued steel screws with small brass uh, ferrules, I suppose they might be called.
With the dial removed, we can lift away the hour wheel, the dial washer, and the minute wheel and pinion. So these gears are collectively called the motion work, and it's these gears that generate the 12 to 1 ratio between the hour and minute hands. Again, we can see that the clock is quite oily, but it's not particularly dirty and everything seems reasonably intact. It's then that we get our first glimpse of some adhesive that's been applied to the palette staff. We'll come back to that later. At this point, I could remove the pallets and let the mechanism run down by running through. But because I don't know the state of the gear train and the bearings, I opt to let the power down at the winding ratchet. Really important before you take any clock apart to get the power off the mainspring. With the power off, when we do remove the pallet cock, we find pieces of paper have been used as shims underneath to increase what we call end shake or axial movement of this component. Now I am not at all averse to a paper shim, um, but it does suggest that somebody in the past has struggled a bit with a previous repair. Looking more closely at the pallets, the disc element with the pallet pins on it has been glued to the pendulum part of the assembly, presumably because one or both components were loose on their staff. The problem with this is it's effectively impossible to put the clock in beat, that's to make the ticking even, and as it turns out, with so little supplementary arc, this beat setting um, capability or functionality is really important to get the clock to work properly. I think that the front plate jewelled bearing in which the pallet arbor uh, reciprocates has been replaced, which is fine, 
But I think it's this that's caused the end shake or axial play issues, hence the paper shims. The rest of the gear train appears fine. So with the movement plate removed, we can see that gear train. The barrel with its mainspring, the intermediate wheel, centre wheel, third wheel and escape wheel. It's the escape wheel that interacts with those pallets and that's the part in any clock or watch that you can hear ticking. So with the movement in bits, I turn my attention to the actual compound pendulum. That is the kind of clock frame with the lead weight at the bottom and the clock mechanism at the top. And there are multiple sheared off, uh, thread stripped and rusted screws. And this turns out to be the majority of the hours of work in this project, not the clock mechanism itself. The rating nut, that's a little uh, adjuster for the timekeeping, is a replacement and doesn't fit its thread. So I carry out multiple attempts at soaking these rusted screws in penetrating oil. Some I have to drill out where the heads have sheared off. Some where the threads are stripped, I have to re-plug those holes with brass and re-tap them. And some of them I've got to make new screws. So it's quite an involved process to make the structure as reasonably sound as I can. But I get kind of so far into it, I'm committed. So um, as much as I'd like to do, there's no turning back.
I find that the rating thread, uh, that's the regulating mechanism, if you like, has been cut to a smaller diameter thread for about half its length. So I decide to cut this section off and drill it out and make a new uh, piece of threaded rod that matches, best I can, the original thread. Then I make a new knurled rating nut for regulating the clock.
with the uh, clock frame, this kind of compound pendulum structure repaired, I then moved back to cleaning the clock movement, uh, including the dial. And the dial I swab with a solution of deionized water, Vulpex soap, and industrial methylated spirits. And the, um, the old oil comes away really easily. Just a note of warning, this dial, the figures or the decoration, is enameled into the surface. So it's quite safe to clean it this way. But you must check that first before beginning to clean any clock dial because sometimes the figures or the numerals are printed on top and they can easily be lost. To soften the glue on the pallets, I soak it in a paint remover, leave it overnight and then it actually flakes away quite easily. To stabilise the pendulum part of the pallet assembly, which was loose, hence the glue, I refit it onto a new brass uh, bushing or collet which is broached to a very slender taper so it's a friction fit on the arbor, the pallet um, staff. So the two components can be moved in relation to one another for beat setting.
So to improve the adjustability of the pallet to escape wheel centre distance, I make these small brass washers and um, they improve the handling of this part of the clock immensely when making those small adjustments. I then uh, reassemble and oil and regulate the clock, which turns out to be quite a challenge, but we get there in the end.
So there we are, our seventh Read Repairs project. This was an interesting one for me because I never worked on one of these compound pendulum clocks before. I had um, a kind of working understanding, or at least I thought so, anyway, of the compound pendulum. But when it came to regulating the clock, um, it was quite a challenge. However, as I said in the video, the real challenge here was just getting the thing finished because there was a surprising amount of work in repairing the, uh, the frame of the clock, if you like. And that's often the case. I think we often think of the clock mechanism as the work, but sometimes the case, the dial, the hands, the pendulum, and all the stuff that surrounds these repairs is actually the really time-consuming element. In fact, I had to put this project down, partly because of the work, but partly because I just needed a rest from it and pick it up again. So thanks to my client for that, um, for their patience. But also, um, maybe this is a bit of an inspiration of sorts. If you've got projects that are stalled, and I've got hundreds of them, uh, to dust them off and restart them again, and maybe this is the year that those projects are going to get finished. It can be done. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And most importantly, leave your comments. It's the likes, the subscription and the comments that keep the channel going. Without them, there will be, uh, there's no point in making the content. So thanks for your support. It's really appreciated. And we will see you again soon with more content. Thank you and bye for now.